Welcome to Marlowe Monday. I'm your host, Steve Reynolds. Generally speaking, creative card men tend to develop methods while circling around classic motifs. Rarely do they move any further away from the starting point. They circle around and around, camouflaging old ideas within standard effects. Marlowe was not only able to create unique methods, utilizing a balance between exceptional sleight of hand, subtleties, and boldness, but he was also able to contribute fresh variations without moving too far afield and away from an effect's classic roots. He would take those effects and add unique presentational changes repeating the effect, adding extra funny moments, for example. He opened up so many new avenues to explore. Much of them still remain not fully charted. So go out, get your Marlowe books out, read, remember, and go forth. This week we're going to use a deck from the Marlowe Card Archive. This is a tuxedo deck. Tuxedo deck. And even though they are decades old, they spread very well, they shuffle very well. Very soft deck. And actually that reminds me uh, during the summers when I was a kid, I used to go visit my uncle. His name was Two Shuffles Walt. And he always shuffled the cards twice to be sure that they were mixed. And I've always wanted to learn his secrets. So one summer, he taught me a few things. He, first, he had me name any card. And uh, so since this is my little Monday, we'll... We'll use the Seven of Diamonds. There it is, Seven of Diamonds. We'll put out there. And we'll actually, we'll cover that up with the card box. Keep that in view. And again, my uncle's name was Two Shuffles Ball. He always shuffled the cards twice. But this time, he cut the cards into four packets. And the lesson was precision. That was the first lesson, precision. He took some up, some down, shuffled face up and the face down. Took another face down section, shuffled those into the face up and face down section. And I said, wait a minute, that's two shuffles. You got one more pack. And he says, well, this time I'll shuffle three times. Tell no one. I hope he's not watching. And he shuffled. And he gave it a little rub like this. A little rub. And what that did was cause all those cards to turn face down. And that was precision. The second lesson was brevity and directness. So in this case, he cut the pack it into or pack into two piles, turn some face up and left the other half face down. And he shuffled once, only once. And just a little riffle, just a little riffle. All those cards turned one way. I mean I was ecstatic. This was amazing stuff. I said, well what about my card? What lesson are you going to give me with my Seven of Diamonds? Mystery. Mystery. He had me put the card face down among the face down cards. And with just the slow pass of his hand. A half an hour later. I'll just speed that up for you. Half an hour later. 
the mystery was revealed. My card, the Seven of Diamonds, face out. And I'll never forget those lessons. Thank you. Marlo speaks. There are those who think that at times I publish too many methods for a given effect. They feel I should publish only the best method and forget the others. The big question, however, is what is the best method? Now, if you develop what you think is the best method, then there should be no more methods forthcoming from any source. You want to bet? Soon as you put out an effect and supposedly is your best of the lot, someone out there sooner or later will come up with a method he thinks is better and in the process may have actually reinvented a method you have scrapped. Nothing is ever the best because it eventually suffers by some kind of comparison, usually related to the information, knowledge, skill, and standards of each individual. The best of mental decks, like Brainwave and Ultramental, has not prevented the publishing of many methods to duplicate the effect with a regular or borrowed deck. And which method of the wild card are you using today? And is that the best method? Almost everyone agrees as to what constitutes the classic effects, but not their methodology. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to add one extra note. In June, my audience first talk will be devoted to the first six Marlowe Mondays. And this will include the detailed explanation and exploration of each item, talking about their history and going further uh, with different ideas and possibilities. So please join audience first soon so you can Enjoy the rest. Take care. Mm -hmm.